uh, certain players and their roles in the team for the rest of the season. So we already have, we already know who the crucial players are. We're gonna we're gonna have the likes of Gabriel Magales, Kai Havertz. They're gonna be playing week in week out, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have Bukayo, you're gonna have Bukayo Saka starting week in week out, David Rea starting week in week out. I, I Martin don't Odegaard. Martin Odegaard, where is he at? Where is he at? Besides right. Thomas Partey. Uh you're gonna have Declan Rice, you're gonna have what do you call it? Uh Ben White, you're gonna have uh Odegaard, you're gonna Here have Martinelli, are. crucial player. I think Kirio. Jorginho even gets in there, crucial player now. Yeah, Kivio as well. Kivior, where is he at? Kivior is a crucial player now. He's overtaken Zinchenko. Yeah, Zinchenko is my number three for me, left back. Okay. Okay. Uh Saliba, of course. We he's in crucial player. Are we missing anybody? Okay. So there's there's certain guys. Alneni, love him. He's probably gonna get sold. Um yeah. this guy here. He, Carl Hine, he's not really playing. Runnerson's already gone. This guy's on loan right now. He's not going to play. Gabriel Jesus, he's going to be a crucial squad player. I don't yeah. see him starting for the remainder of the season, in my opinion. Yeah, Mikel I Ratic think so. going to have to find time to give him get him in, but he's going to be basically utilized as rotation across the front three. Very useful rotation piece mm -hmm. across the front three. Right? You yeah, definitely. I totally agree. I totally agree. I think I think Gabriel he sues because of his knee injury off and on as well. And um apart from his injury, he's not very he's not the most clinical player, but I think he's a very useful player. And um to have someone like that come off the bench and cause problems is good, you know. Um so yeah. So yeah, I think he's gonna be a good squad player. Um okay. Uh next, what are we gonna see from Reese Nelson? Undecided. It does he's not? Does he need more game time? Is he going to be a bench player? I would. This since we're talking about using them this season, I would keep him on the bench because we need to have as much rotation as we need. Like what happened with Luton, where we brought him in first to play and we were able to rest Saka. Um, that's very important. In certain games that we will play, we might need to start people like Nielsen. Bruce Nielsen. They're 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 able. Like just talking about the rest of this season, since we don't know who we're getting next season. These I don't see him. I don't see him coming in and being an actual starter for for the remainder of the season at all. I think this was a one off game where he starts. I don't see him starting for the remaining it's games. Dependent, though, Egal. It's dependent. The remaining on... eight games. Where do you see him potentially getting a start? Where the remaining eight games? Who are we? Let me pull out who we're playing. Let me just pull this up real quick. Sorry. Is he good enough for Arsenal to start? We uh, for us. But he, he was good enough against Luton, wasn't he? I mean, so what? what I mean, that question has been answered. Is he good enough? Yes. He was good enough against Luton. I mean, let's be realistic. This this is what I've been trying to explain to most people. We're still going to play people like um, Wolves, Everton. These are tough teams, don't get me wrong. But we also need to make sure we're managing our players. We need to make sure, whether we're bringing someone like Nelson in for the last okay. 20 minutes. Let me, let me give you an example. You know, Brighton, you don't start him. Uh, I don't start him at Brighton. Bayern, you don't start him. Aston Villa, you don't start him. Wolves away, you don't start him. Chelsea at home, you don't start him. Tottenham, you don't start him. The game where he could potentially get a start is at home versus Bournemouth, May 4th. But at that point, we have such a big gap between the Tottenham game and the game on May 4th that will he play with six days on rest? But that's and what I'm saying. Days that... rest with, uh, and, and seven days rest for the next game. Would he just actually get game time? Egal, you just mentioned four or five games. If anybody gets injured in those four or five games, what happens? Because we, he comes we, in as a bench well, player. That's what that's what I'm saying. So I said he'll be on the bench for me because what okay. we're saying is, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna Eddie and Ketia unused sub. I will leave him on the bench as well. I don't think he plays. I think I'm not he, saying I'm not saying I'm not saying he plays. I think he's in the same category as Al Neni. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to understand what we're doing here. Are we talking about the future of these players, or are we talking about for the rest of the season how we're going to use them? For, okay, for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, if it's for the rest of the season, how we're going to use them, then I would leave Eddie as a bench player, not a good squad player, but as a bench player. I would leave Nelson as a bench player, somebody I can bring onto the bench at any given time in case I have injuries on my good squad rotation. So my main players are my crucial players that are going to play completely. My good squad players would be the guys who 
I will bring in half time. You know, I know that like for like, they're going to be able to step in. Then I'm going to have a bench where I'm like, okay, for these guys, these are the guys that sit on the bench for the rest of the season, just in case I need to rotate and rest certain players. I'll bring them in for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, get my players out on time, let them get some rest, you know. And then, of course, if we're talking about next season, these are players that have to go. I understand okay. the sell, yeah. So, okay. Uh, Cedric, no game time for me. No, no, no game time for Cedric. I mean, Cedric doesn't get any game time. Uh, next, Thomas Partey. He's a crucial. Good squad player, squad yeah. Player. Right now, back from injury, yeah. He could definitely get himself into the crucial position and overtake Jorginho, but he needs some time to get his get self I just, look, next. Let me let me just. I just love that we have players like this, like players like Jesus Partey, to come into the team. Like these are this is what I want. You understand? Like so when when people are like, oh my god, um, I'm like, no, this is not about guys. We're not doing sell and all that player. We're just saying for the rest of the season. Who, who's going to get more game time? Who's a good rotational squad player that can come in and do the business? Who are we going to keep on the bench just as back-back bench? And who gets no game time? That's what we're talking about here. So this is not sell, buy, uh, get rid of. I see all of you in the chats going crazy. Sell Mohamed El Neni. Sell this person. We know. They all go. Yeah. Uh, Ramsdale, he's not getting one minute. I would leave him on the bench. Because you still need a goalkeeper on your no, bench. No, no, no. He's still going to be on the bench, but I he doesn't play. I but that's what I'm saying. Like we need to put him where he's supposed to be, though. He's going to I, it, whether he plays or not is not the point. Who's going to be on our bench is the question. If everybody has no game time at all, are they going to ever be on the like? God forbid, seven of our players have COVID. God forbid, Raya gets <laughs> injured. Ramsdale has to come in. Ramsdale has to come in. We need somebody on the bench. Okay. This guy's not even at the club. This guy's no, not, not even at the club. This guy's no not even at the club. This guy's yeah. not even at the club. So they don't count. Right? Next, Emma Smith Rowe. I really liked his performance that I seen against Luton. I don't think he's ready yet to be promoted to good squad player. I'll at leave the him on the bench. Time, I'm going to put him good bench player. Yeah. But he could easily get himself up there with some more good performances. But I just haven't seen enough to say that he's up to the level to play against the likes of Man United, Tottenham, and everybody else. Yeah, against Ali, Lippin, Ali. there were some moments where I seen he was quite slow with his passes. He wasn't match sharp yet. Let's and, when, and As he gets yeah. more match sharp, maybe he can get up to the good squad player level. Yeah, you can't you can't blame him as well because um, injuries, and then he came back and he hasn't had a lot of game time. So it's it's understandable that he's not match sharp, um, match sharp yet. And, um, you know, he, he, there's, a, there's a talent in there. There's a talent in that kid. So I think I'll leave him on as in, on my bench for the rest of the season and see where he's useful because he's a player that can actually come in and do the business. If we're leading, I believe like if we're leading 2-0, 3-0 in a game, these are players that I can throw off the bench with some good squad players so that my main players can rest against the next game because I, you have to manage the amount of time that these players are playing at this, this last end of season. Games are coming thick and fast, two days intervals, back to back. So Timber, I have a hot take. He's not going to get any game time for the rest of the season. I think it's unlikely he plays. Yeah. It's unlikely he plays. Yeah, he also said the same thing. Uh, there was an interview that I saw, and they with asked young him. Philly. I think it was with Young Philly, but there was something else that I saw where they asked him, uh, "How soon do you think?" And he says, "I'm I'm working on it. Maybe end of the season, I'll be back." He said, "End of the season." He actually said those words, and um, so that means the end, the end of the season. He's not. And even if he does come back right now, I'll I'll be mad if they throw him in the game. Hmm. Like I would, I'd literally because he, we've seen what he can do. I don't think we want him to get injured that quickly back again. Like let him finish the season. Let's get him back into preseason. Let's you know, that's going to be like a new signing for next season. So yeah, no game time for him. All right, do me a favor, guys. We got about forty five of you guys watching on YouTube right now, and we got about seventy six of you guys watching his, on, on Twitter. Striker, so his twin brother. The people watching on Twitter, if you could come join us on YouTube, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a penny, and it helps out the channel massively. And the people on tw on YouTube right now, do me a favor. Hit the like button. It's free. Hit the like right now. Let's get to at least 45 likes since we got 48 of you guys in the chat. Should be It should be easy. Simba has a twin, Shouldn't yeah. see any free, free loaders. Make sure you hit the like button. It doesn't cost a penny. And also, let me know what you guys think. Timber has a twin. I know yeah, Timber he does. has a twin. Yeah, the twin. His brother played for Netherlands and people freaked yeah, out. They're like, oh, Timber's playing. And I was like, no, that's his twin brother. <laughs> yeah, people people, people on socials literally take 
to take everything too serious. That was just someone jo joking around saying, what's Timber doing play for Netherlands when, when he has a knee injury? Um, Trussard, good squad player. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna probably start a lot of these games also from yeah. now to the end of the season. I wouldn't be surprised. Certain games are more suited to him. You know I what? Know I if, would. You know what? I don't I know if he's gonna down. start against his old team, Brighton. Though, who do you think? Yeah. Uh against Brighton, I, I, my, my starting lineup doesn't have Trossard in it against Brighton, but I have him coming on. But what I would have done is I, have I would him have coming said, on against Bayern and Brighton. I just don't have him starting either. Yeah, I would have him. I, in fact, I was going to say like crucial players are crucial players to me, which includes Jesus. These is are crucial, crucial. No, no. So here's what I'm saying, Igal. I'm saying I would not even have good squad player because I have bench players. So I'd have crucial players because these are all crucial guys that we need fit at any time so we can mix and match the team to play whoever we want to play to suit it to not just our first eleven, like the crucial sixteen that we can mix and match. At any given time, and then the bench players are people that are like you know the the, the Nelson. So Trussard and... jumps straight into crucial. Yes, I would put him in crucial. You know what? I agree. I the only reason why I was putting him in good squad players because I was thinking we would only put eleven in our crucial player. But you're right. No team has just eleven good players. They have like at least. 13, 14, 14 13, yeah, you know. 14. Yeah. So you need at least a couple good substitutes, and you know what. It shows the players that are in good player that haven't really played much. Injuries. You can, you, you can tell that. So for me, Thomas Partey and Gabriel Jesus, because of their on and off this season with the injuries, I would leave them in good squad player because I'm still trying to manage them and I don't want, want them does to get that, Does that mean Tom Yasu also is a good squad player? Yes, because of his injury record. I would also keep him in good squad player. I don't Any player that I, I know is very good and is prone to injury will be, will be on my good squad player list because I don't want them to get injured right now. Um, I would shuffle between, you know, they would be on the bench as well when, whenever we're playing, of course. these are the, Because think about it, if we put our first 11 and you have people like Gabriel Jesus, uh, Thomas Partey, Tommy Yasu, um, you know, let's say we bring in, we bring, who can we bring out of there? Let's say we bring out on the main 11. Let's say we put Trust out too on the, as in a good squad. Our first 11, think about it. And you have guys like this to be able to come in. Yeah. I think that would be a... okay. So what we've done is we basically we basically did our first eleven plus Trussard so far. Yeah, so far for but first eleven plus Trussard, and if you really get rid of good player and you just do bench player instead, you then would have we currently we currently have seven bench players. Where do you see Vieira? He's bench. He's bench because of injuries. He's bench. Vieira started off the season well, but like he's he I, needs, I wouldn't he needs be surprised. To go. I wouldn't be surprised if Emma Smith Rowe took his position in the in the uh, in the like players off the bench. I think because of his injury and then he needs to bulk up. That that guy Have that we guy. seen what's what's up with him? He's fit. He's been fit for a while. No, so he's he needs to bulk up as well. You remember how Eddie went and bulked up over the over the the season, the, the last season, and Eddie just went from skinny to, um, you know, I think he needs to bulk up. Um, that that would be that's the last thing I think he needs to do. He's he's the skill is there, the, the technicality is there. The guy floats on the ball. I think there's a player and a half in him, but he's too he's not ready for this prem. I big up, big up, Jez. Big up, Jez. He says, Iga, we had our uh, we had our debates and disagreements, but respect. You are a passionate fan. Big up to you, Jez, man. Hope you're doing well, guys. Go check out uh, the Arsenal. Uh, uh, sorry, Arsenal, the history and more. Big up to you. Thank you for the super chat, bro. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, man, you know what it is. At the end of the day, we're all Arsenal fans. It doesn't matter if we disagree, if we have arguments. As long as at the end of the day, our team wins. That's all we care about, of course, yep. right? People are saying Vieira is dead food. I, I'm not even going to take. I'm not Connor. You're not serious. I'm not going to take that seriously because here's the thing, though. We if he's fit, we, we have a run of games this this end of the season where we're talking about games every two days. Every like literally, players can get injured. So if these guys are going to be used, like I don't. Here's my my. I said this the last time we, we had a stream. You got one. I said if I'm a Teta, I play my best eleven against any team. I I back them to score two three goals in the first half. And then I bring in the rest of the guys because I trust my defense to just show it up and just stay and ride it out. If we win 3-1, 2-1, I don't care. Just keep winning every game. Get your three points. Let's move on. 
This is not the time to come and be flashy and show free-flowing football. This is the time to be pragmatic. Score when you need to score. Take your chances when you need to take your chances. Lock up the game and let's just win something. That's all I care about. So this whole idea that people think that people like Vieira and Smith are not uh, useful anymore, they are useful because the run of games are too close. Final game... player. I would put Zinchenko still in good squad player. Yeah, Zinni is in good squad player for me, definitely. Because I think Zinchenko, as much as we want to talk about players that we're going to be utilizing as bench player, I think Zinchenko not only will be utilized as bench player, he will be starting a lot of these games against Zinni is disrespected by a lot of like by a lot of fans. And I I, I let find me, it, but let me give you an example. I find it a Will Zinni start on the final game of the season versus Everton, Bournemouth, Wolves, Aston Villa. One of the games against Bayern? I think Zinni will start against a team that plays a very deep low block. I, this, is where we, this is where we need to realize that th at this stage, after Ateta did what he did with Man City and the, the kind of way we but, played but, defensively... But let's, let me stop you right there. KBR has taken his spot, though. That's my point. I, I agree with you. Don't get me wrong, Igal. I agree with you. But I'm saying certain teams require certain players. We can't just... We, we can't be dead on and say someone has taken somebody's spot. And because... Kiro is that good. Okay, great. Let's go play a team with deep block where Kiro is unable to invert. We're unable to break them down. We don't score. And then we, we draw and we get a point and then we don't win the league. Just because Kiro is good in left back and a second in spot doesn't mean that when we're playing a team that requires a certain skill set, which is what I realized. When we played Man City, Arteta played a certain way. Arteta has learned that I need to use players in a certain way in certain games to be able to get the thing that I need to get out of it. So if we're going to play a team where we like it's, we need a Zinchenko, we need to flood the midfield because of the low block. Then we play a Zini. And in that in that position, maybe we play a, a double pivot as well. So somebody else can help him cover on that side, you know. So we 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 have to we have to be we have to rotate. I'm not saying um Kirio, Kirio hasn't taken his position. He has, as far as I'm concerned, but there are certain games where we need to just sit down and be like, hey, we know how this team is going to play against us, we know what they're going to do, and we need a player like this, you know that can actually do this and be able to get something out of it. That's my that's my take on it. Okay. Okay. Um I'm just I'm just thinking right now. If you were to change one player, I would change the potential. I could see I could see potentially uh Jesus and Partey being put into crucial. And then Tommy Yasu too then if that's the case. Like all these guys are crucial. If if we're gonna if we're gonna do if we're gonna do actual bench players and crucial players, then I could see Tomiyasu being the first player off the bench and Zinchenko being added to crucial. I, and then I this, would, this category being deleted. I would put I would put Tomiyasu in crucial because if, are... if I was to delete this category and I only have three categories: crucial players, bench players. Is Thomas Partey a bench player for the rest of the season? I think Thomas Partey is a, is, will be on the bench for the rest of the season and come in. Um, I would, I would actually, the reason why the people I put in crucial are people I could potentially see starting consistently. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I see, I see Tommy Yasu also starting in certain games, depending on who we're playing. Okay, so in that case, Tommy Yasu would also be crucial. Yeah. So Anybody who you feel like you could play against Bayern Munich is a crucial player. Yeah. These players on the bench right here. I don't necessarily see them playing against Bayern Munich. Do you yeah, get me? That's true. That is true. I think Tommy Asu played for what? What club was he in before he came to? Uh, um, he was in. Was it Bologna or Sasu or what was the club? Anyways, I don't remember. Yeah. I, so, do you agree with that though? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like for me, these are all our crucial players. These are all, all all the players there in the first row. We need to have yeah, Bologna. Thank you. Let uh, me let me let me just let me just uh delete this. Okay, so say if I was to do a role here, which is impact subs. Impact subs. So the impact subs would be Trossard, Jesus, Parte, Zinchenko, and, and Tommy Asu. Yeah. So, so these are the levels that we would have. If this is our first 11, and by the way, can we agree this is our best 11? 
I would say yes. I would say or that's, would you that's take, 11. Would you take Jorginho? No, I would not. I would, I would not take Jorginho. Party hasn't played a lot this season. I mean, that's totally unfair. Okay. I'm not, so, yeah. I mean, so if, this, even if, if compare this is the our best 11, time, if this is our best 11 and our impact subs are, our impact subs would be these guys. Then I'm, I I think I think we have enough depth in this moment in time in majority of these positions. Look at that. When say Ben White gets injured, you have Tommy Asu that can come in, and then you uh, and and you also have. So yeah, you really only have Tommy Asu that can that can fill in at right back. Yeah, right. we have Tommy Asu that can fill in at right back. Um, if, if Timber is not ready yet. Timber is not ready now. If Gabriel Magalhães gets injured, KBR comes in. If uh, Saliba gets injured, then Ben White ships over. Tommy Asu comes in. Tommy Asu if... also plays center. Do you know Tommy Asu also plays um, right center back for yeah, Japan? Yeah, I know. Tommy so... Asu can also fill in for Saliba, but he hasn't been utilized there enough. And then you also have, uh, so up top, you have one, two, three, four, five options in the attack, really, if you exclude Nelson and Eddie and Ketia, because really and truly, you're not bringing in Eddie and Ketia or Reese Nelson to start for any of these guys. So we just need to make sure if there's a situation with Saka right now, you you play J, you play Jesus or you play uh, uh, Trussard. And I think Kai Havertz's emergence as that number nine has really benefited us a lot because it now only, not only offers us a lot of cover in the midfield as a left eight, he also offers us more cover of, across the front three in the attacking position. So that's really crucial. The left back position is the position where we have the most cover. You could play Tomiyasu there, you could play Zinchenko there, and you could play KVR there. Plus, if Timber comes back, you could play him there also. So we have a lot of cover there. DM position, we have decent cover. The position that I'm not the most comfortable with, in my opinion, is that number 10 position. If something happens to Odegaard, Kai Havertz will actually have to play in the 10, or we would need Reese Nelson or, Z or, K or, or Vieira. And... So it's almost like Odegaard is probably our most crucial player not to get injured from now until the end of the season, in my opinion. Him plus the two center backs. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think I think Odegaard is one of our most important players. And to be honest, I think because we ha we didn't get to see a lot of Vieira this season because of his injury, um, I, I don't know what he's going to be capable of doing. I, I know there's a player in there, but I he, he we've not seen enough. Sadly, we, we we dropped out of the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, where which would have been a good place for us to see him, um, kind of at least show us what he's capable of doing. So, yeah, that role is quite important. If anything happens to <clears throat> to Martin Odegaard, it's good. There's going to be a big gaping hole there. But the other thing is, if anything happens to Martin Odegaard, then we probably just tweak the way we play, which is then we bring in a Thomas Partey, a Declan Rice, and then we play um, and we play um, you know, then we can play Vieira. And just hope that at least now we know that there's there's major cover. You know what I'm saying? And you've got Wright playing that eight. You've got Vieira playing the ten, and then Thomas Partey playing DM. Um, Partey is back, hopefully, and Smith Rowe can and most Smith Rowe as well can play that can play that role. Um, can play. Thank you for watching. This has been Eagles Hawks Football. If you enjoyed that video, please do make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button. Check out these next two videos right here on each side of me, and of course, you can subscribe right there. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you that you're watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Peace.